Transrectal biopsy often results in overdetection and underdiagnosis. While multi-parameter MRI improves detection of larger high-grade lesions, widespread application is limited by cost and expertise. Transperineal biopsy of the prostate with mapping software provides an accurate alternative to MRI. The patient is placed in the dorsal orthotomy position and the ultrasound probe in the stepping device is inserted into the rectum. The urologist captures images in axial starting from the base and working his way to the apex while at the same time those images are captured on the laptop. The urologist or his assistant sits at the laptop and uses the tools of the program to contour the prostate, urethra, and rectum. The contouring starts at the base of the gland and works its way down to the apex until the entire gland is rendered in three dimension. This is a close-up view of the contouring. This is the sixth slice from base to apex being contoured. There are various options with the contouring tools uh, allowing smooth or nodal contouring. You can always go back and adjust contours. Now the urethra is being added. In the biopsy generate plan, various options are available including length of needle core, distance from capsule to the first needle, distance from the urethral margin to the needle, overlapping needles, for example, if the needle is 1.7 centimeters in length and the length of the prostate is 3 centimeters, then two inline needles will need to be used. The urologist then looks at the axial images and evaluates the needle positions. He can switch to the three-dimensional image and look at the needle positions relative to the capsule, their positions relative to the urethra, and can be modified as desired. Once the plan is accepted, the urologist can start taking biopsies. The prostate is imaged in its midpoint, and the urologist inserts the biopsy needle so it enters the prostate at the left upper corner on the grid. That's the same position as the right upper corner on the prostate, or needle number one. The second biopsy is about to be taken and is seen on the axial image. The virtual needle needs to be moved so it overlies the actual needle. This step is important because the coordinates for the needle need to match in order to represent the actual biopsy site. Imaging is switched to sagittal and the virtual needle is lined up to the actual needle which is pulled back to the apex and fired to take the sample. After the sample is taken, the urologist is going to remove the needle gun from the patient and bring it over to the side table. The sample is put on a telfa or other media and India ink needs to be applied to the tip of the sample to allow the pathologist to identify its apical end. Each sample is put into an individual vial. Here's an axial image of the prostate showing the next biopsy site. Imaging is switched to sagittal. The needle is brought back to the apex and fired. This next biopsy demonstrates two inline biopsies. First, a biopsy is taken at the apex, and then the needle is advanced to the mid portion of the prostate, and a biopsy is taken from the mid portion all the way to the base. This allows the pathologist to reconstruct the core as one. The biopsy is to be taken from the right lateral aspect of the prostate. The needle is inserted at its designated place, and the probe is rotated so the needle point is in the midline. The probe will then be switched to sagittal imaging and the needle will be viewed just prior to the biopsy. Biopsy needle is advanced to the apex. Notice how when the needle is advanced it pushes the prostate towards the head of the patient. This is typical and the user needs to adjust the base of the contour so it aligns to the base of the prostate before firing the needle. A midline posterior biopsy is to be taken underneath the urethra. The needle is inserted in the intended target position and the probe is then switched to sagittal imaging. This midline position shows the virtual and the actual urethra aligned above the biopsy needle. The pathology phase demonstrates that this patient had eight lesions. The lighter colored lesions are Gleason 6 prostate cancer. 
and the darker lesions are Gleason 7 prostate cancer. When one clicks on the lesion, it brings up a dialog box showing the length of the core and the actual position of the lesion in orange. The model can be rotated in any number of directions. For example, here we're rotating the model laterally so one can see the position of the lesions from apex to base. The last set of images represent the treatment phase. These individual axial images can be uploaded into a treatment planning system, for example, a cryo system, a brachytherapy system, even a system uh, utilizing IMRT. This allows the physician to use extremely accurate focus therapy and target the indicated lesions, as shown here on the dialog box. In this particular patient, there are several lesions in the mid portion of the prostate. No lesions further down in the prostate, and then another set of lesions close to the apex of the prostate. The 3D biopsy provides an accurate method of determining the pathologic characteristics of the entire prostate gland. Patients diagnosed with low volume, low grade disease can be managed by active surveillance and forgo the need for subsequent repeat biopsy. Small volume, high grade disease, or low grade multifocal disease can be managed with focus therapy. Three dimensional mapping provides the roadmap to perform this treatment. 3D mapping will also identify the group of patients who have larger volume, high grade disease requiring prostatectomy or radiation therapies.